Overthinking is the habit of excessive or repetitive thinking on a problem, situation, or topic. This often leads to decision paralysis, where it becomes very difficult for you to make up your mind, make a decision. Hi, this is Transformation Specialist Narado Zico Powell. And today, I'm going to give you three science back ways to overcome overthinking. Over the years on my show, we've given you many habits and tips and guidelines to improve your health. But that also includes the mind. Because if you have the perfect nutrition, the perfect workout routine, the perfect gut health routine, but you don't work on your mind, it can still impact your health in so many negative ways. So let's get this started. The first habit I want to talk about is practicing mindfulness. Now we've heard that a lot, but do we really know what practicing mindfulness means? See, mindfulness involves focusing on the present moment without judgment. One of my dear friends, Sam Led, who hosts The Fearless Now, a podcast that focuses on individuals who are diagnosed with ADHD, says that a lot of times individuals with ADHD, they overthink. They fear things. Their mind is moving so fast that they don't stop and, and move back to the present. And that's something I learned from watching Sam over the years is pivoting back to the present. And that can be hard to do, especially in the given situation. So it has to be a part of practice. One of the ways is uh, grounding exercises, like deep breathing or observing your surroundings. So when you put yourself in a situation or you see that you're in a situation where you're overthinking, you're starting to freak out, as some may say, is to pivot to presence. Appreciate your surroundings. Appreciate the good in what's around you, especially if you are in a good surrounding, a calm, serene surrounding throughout the day. I live in Florida, so sometimes it's a little bit easier to stand by a lake or a dam and just stand by the water and just take in the moment. Because in today's fast-paced society, we're always going, going, going. Our minds always think about the next thing, sometimes good, but oftentimes bad. We're thinking about the worst thing that could happen so we don't we, we can face it when it does happen. And yes, you need to be prepared. But stop and enjoy your moment. Stop and enjoy where you are, what you have accomplished. If you're always looking for the next thing, you'll never truly appreciate joy. Once a week, I worship on the seventh day Sabbath. Or I should say, I, was, I worship every day, but I observe the seventh day Sabbath. And that one day is when I go to church, I spend time with the Lord. I, buy, I study the Bible every day of the week, but that one day is de dedicated to my spiritual growth and letting go all the problems of the world. And I focus on, primarily on my relationship with the Lord. I connect with other spiritual individuals. I go to church. I go for a nice walk outside. I, you know, I, I appreciate the moment. I step away from all my troubles. So that helps me throughout the rest of the week, or should I, sorry, the rest of the week to say yes and enjoy my time around me and pivot back to the present whenever I feel myself slipping away. Am I perfect? No, I still make mistakes. But having that one day a week where I detox from social media, I detox from the world, I don't worry about my problems, and it's my time to grow with the Lord, that helps me tremendously in my health. The next is set a time limit, which is going to be similar or close to what I talk about social media. You need to allocate a specific time to reflect. Now, for me, the seven-day Sabbath is one thing, but so that's a very big part, actually. I want to kind of downplay that. The seven-day Sabbath is very important for me to connect with the Lord and connect with others. So even daily, 
I spend time Bible study. I spend time in prayer. It doesn't have to be a lot. I understand that we're busy. We have things to do. So it doesn't have to be a lot of time. You don't need an hour or two every day. Sometimes it's 30 minutes. Sometimes it's 15 minutes. Sometimes you have to pray in the shower. But you want to spend time to reflect every single day. Um, engage in physical activity. I really want to talk about that because we cannot downplay that. With everything else, physical activity is also important. We always argue about the mind over the body, the body over the mind. That's not what it comes down to. They're all connected, right? And one impact the other. It's like a two-lane two, two highway, right? They both impact each other. So physical activity is important. We, have, we know that exercise releases endorphins, right? When you exercise and you move, you feel better. But it doesn't have to be intense exercise. Sometimes it can be a walk around the lake. Sometimes it could be um, spending time with friends and family and, you, you know, you go for a bike ride or do a physical activity outside, connecting with each other. Imagine if you can connect all these, right? I, together, they can, like, by themselves, they are great. But together, they can do wonderful things for you. So physical activity, it could be a 15-minute walk every day. or you know, playing with children or, you know, going for a swim or just something to clear your mind. I mean, driving may not be the best thing to do when you need to clear your mind. You want to be able to be focused. So something like, you know, something is a light activity every single day. One of my favorite habits is after I eat, I go for a 10 minute walk. And that's great for your health. That's great for your digestion. But not just that, it's great for your mental health and also great for your emotional health. So every time I, I eat, I just go for a short walk. If you can only afford five minutes, go for five minutes. Get some vitamin D outside. Or combine all those. And that can really help you to pivot to the presence and feel amazing, enjoying the joys of life. This is Transformation Specialist Narado Zico Powell.